Hey guys, welcome back to Rate and Rent. This week we bring in Lee Ren. How you doing? Doing well, thank you. Seller Central. Now we uh, we we do know that Amazon invest into their customers, and that's abundantly clear from the support end of things as well. What's your take on things? Yeah, I mean, my take is is the same. And what I found in talking to you know a variety of seller support reps is that. One, some of them, you know, the ones you get like in, you know, the Philippines or India, some of them don't even, they don't work directly from Am- for Amazon. They're actually contracted out and they're very limited into the tools that they have available or what they could do. Um, and, you know, they're limited in the knowledge that they have. And um, I think when, you know, as an experienced seller, sometimes you have to give them pushback on the advice that they're telling you and say, wait a second, I don't think that's right. Um, you really need to you know, escalate this to somebody else or get me a, the right answer because what you're telling me is actually the, the wrong information. So I've definitely experienced that and I'm sure for those watching have experienced um, frustrations with seller support, especially, you know, getting sort of canned responses when you open a case or have an issue and then you write back and you try to explain and they're not actually reading your email. They're just hitting another button for another canned response and it can be really frustrating um, so yeah, I think I think there's a lot that could be improved there, um, and that you really need to know that you it's okay to give them pushback. Uh, it's okay to ask for escalation um, for the leadership team, for the captive team. Um, it's okay to try to call another time where you might get you know if you're on Amazon.com a U.S. Uh, representative. They have a team in North Dakota. They have a team in Costa Rica. That's good too, um, and I find those are much better trained employees that know what they're doing as opposed to some of the other countries where you know where you have support yeah and so let's start with a horror story give me one of your horror stories yep um so um i actually i'm in the uh amazon exclusives program when i first got into it um one of the benefits of being in it is that they will um uh, gate your brand right so you don't have hijackers jumping on that's the first thing i asked for when I was originally um, in the program uh, over a year ago. Um, and uh, so I, my rep uh, emailed me and said, okay, give me all the ASINs, you know, that, that, that you have and we'll, we'll, we'll gate them. So this was like a Friday. Um, I emailed him all. He said, okay, I sent it over to seller support. Should be good, like within a day. And then Saturday morning, I look, I don't have any sales. Um, and I go to my listing and it's unavailable. I'm not on my own listings. They, they gated me out of my own listings. So I uh, no longer have a hijacker problem, but I no longer have any, any listings also. And that was a, a stressful weekend. Um, I didn't get back on my listings until Monday. And I actually left the exclusive program because of that, because I was like very frustrated. I did get to eventually go back into it. Um, but, you know, that was seller support. They gave them instructions. They said gate the brand. Obviously, they didn't understand they need to keep, you know, the brand owner on them and you know it was, it was lost sales for for an entire weekend so um definitely cases like that um i've had cases where um i try to explain to amazon support um that's a competitor is using my brand name in the in the back end of uh, of listings which you can easily do by just searching your brand name and see if other people come up also in the organic results um and now with all the tools out there to check back end keywords you can you can verify it but um, I had that recently and I opened an infringement case against the seller who's using my brand name and Amazon, I get a canned response that says, we don't see any violation of the trademark in the listing. And I write back in all caps, like not on the listing in the back end keywords. It's a violation of terms of service. Didn't get anywhere. And I, you know, I emailed the seller and they, they actually, they actually took it, took it out themselves. Um, this is like a Chinese seller. I've had a couple of times where I had to email the seller to do it, but they just couldn't understand from me opening the case because they're looking at like, an instruction sheet that they have with what to look for and they're not actually reading your email. So um, yeah, it could definitely be frustrating at times. And um, I think you mentioned to me before we started, I've also had times where they told me I cannot um, bring up this issue again, respond to a case again. Cause I kept like reopening cases um, yeah. and they told me I can't, I can't, you know, reopen another case, you know? Um, now that, that drives me mad as well when they spool a case where they all, yeah. They'll, they'll be, they, I'm sure there's some metrics that are measured on and they close your case. And I'm like, do not close this case because it's not concluded. You right. just, you cut and pasted a load of junk off the website. It's a load of nonsense. And I, I ask you, please do not close this case until it's resolved. It's never resolved. You cut and paste it. And that, that drives me mad. You know, even um, 
when I have to phone them up. I mean, one story that I said to you before the show is that when we looked into Japan, I just wanted to do a quick test on our listing. So I switched it from FBA to Merchant Fulfilled. It's like, right, we haven't got the buy box. Now, I know in some cases that you don't have the buy box, it's the brand new account, et cetera, et cetera. But that's not what they tell you. They send you these long, protracted emails where they've just been cut and paste. And you go back and you challenge each bit. And you say, well, you know, you need to win the buy box. And you need this and you need that. And, it's like, and then you start to pick apart their emails. And then before you know it, 25 emails have gone past. And all they had to say at the very beginning, just to make it clear to you, when you launch in Japan and you've got a brand new account, we do not allow Merchant Fulfilled. And the irony, like what you just said, is that they banned me from ever discussing that subject again because I, I meticulously picked apart every element of it. And, and I was just saying to them, like, Look, hold on a minute, right? So let's have this right. You've just told me I need to improve the status of this account, get great feedback. But how can I do that if I never win the buy box? And then they'll come back with something else. It's like, but you're missing the whole point. You, you're sending me around in a circle here. There is never going to be a way to improve this account unless at some point I win the buy box. And I'll tell you what I did do. I actually um, set up a load. Of, I bought a load of bar, barcodes and I set up a load of listings and showed that I could not um, actually appear. And I said, look, here's because, uh, you know, like just cheap ones. Yeah. I just put title and a few uh, elements in there I bought speedy barcodes or whatever it was and I just built out all of these listings and I sent them through and went this one we do not appear this one we do not appear so because there was one part of the email they told me in there it said oh it may not be on every one it just you may be a, a series of listings that you will have and then you may appear for one of those and I'm like I think it was either 10 or 12 in total I can't remember the exact figure but I'm like look you said this in your previous email, I've gone and set up all these listings and I can't appear for the buy box for anyone. And I sent videos, you know, like you've got um, like yes. a camp yeah, yeah. Drove me beyond despair because it because obviously you've got the time difference. So it goes on for a couple of weeks, doesn't it? Back forth, right. back forth, back, close yeah, the yeah. case, open a new case. And you can't speak to anyone over there. It even got to the point where I, I jumped onto LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn, sorry, and I started to try and add members of staff that worked in uh, Japan for Amazon, just so I can just like get someone sensible to deal with. But anyway, that's a big old rent there. So that's, um, that's a smart move. So, so, you know, so I guess we could talk about a few things. One, it's interesting. A couple of years back, I heard Amazon, there was talk about a pilot program where people would pay like $400 a month for, you know, like a dedicated rep, but they never yeah. seem to have launched that. Um, yeah. I think that's a, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy that we, we would have to pay for that, but I think a lot of sellers would pay for that if they had a dedicated, you know, seller support rep that they could actually like talk to on the phone and was based, yeah. you know, not in the Philippines or something and it could actually like understand and have common sense. And um, it's something that, they, you know, Amazon, um, I think there was a women's conference like in 2015 and um, in Seattle and they mentioned, they offered people like an opportunity, a pilot, and I guess they never ended up ended up doing that, but, um, that, that could be a good solution. Um, yeah. you know, another, another thing that I always do is I do always try to one, I never accept their answer. If it's no to something I want to do. Um, I had a case recently where I withdrew inventory by mistake, um, before the, uh, before the August, um, you know, removal and it wasn't free removal. So I didn't think it was an issue. And then um, because I was, I was changing suppliers, I didn't want to mix the old inventory with the new one because it was slightly different. Um, and then I couldn't send in inventory and I had to open case and escalate and escalate and not accept no for an answer. And they actually made an exception and uh, let me send in inventory. So the lesson is don't accept necessarily what a seller support rep tells you. Don't accept that exceptions can't be made. Um, and, you know, you can escalate to, you know, captive team, leadership team. Um, and try to get somebody. Um, this this you know. breaks down what you just said: captive team, leadership team, catalog team. There are certain teams that are going to be the most beneficial for you when you get f get through the first wave, isn't it? If imagine right. them, you got the blockers, haven't you? Like you, you phone right. them up and they have no idea what you're talking about. Right. And you literally hear their brain ticking in the background as they're looking at their screen and reading off the screen 
oh yeah, you're in this section here, so this, you need now to do this. And if you do, and it's like, you're just reading off the screen, aren't you? They go, yeah. Right. And then you say in a nice way, may I speak to someone from that department who has a background in this information? I, I, I appreciate you are here to support us, but from our conversation, it seems that this may be not the area that you trained in. May we speak to somewhere else? So sometimes that gets moved along, but if you notice the way that some of them, like, they hold on for dear life. They don't want you to go anywhere. And it's like, right. but you don't know anything. Right. It probably hurts their, their metrics that they're measured on, right? As far as yeah. like how many calls they've handled, how fast the calls are, and how many calls have to get escalated above their level. Um, yeah. I'm sure they get rated on, on, on all that kind of stuff. Um, but um, yeah, so, you know, and, you know, recently, you know, for example, I wanted to get my oversized storage increased. They told me no. Again, I gave them pushback. I said, Q4 is coming. I need to send more inventory, escalate as, you know, and they got it. They went to a manager, they got it approved, even though you have to have like, you know, 8% of your sales over six weeks, every single week. So you can give seller support a lot of pushback um, and you can be aggressive. And I find it never, it's never hurt me to be aggressive, mm -hmm. especially with frontline, you know, first level support. It's never hurt me to say, uh, no, this is not right information or um, yeah. exceptions can always be made. I want to talk to but someone else. No to someone isn't aggressive, is it? It's the way that you say it. It's, that's why I say to them, you know, I get frustrated. They probably hear the frustration in my voice. And I'm like, right. Look, I totally understand that you're just doing your job, but from our conversations, you don't seem to understand what I'm, what we're discussing here. And all I'm asking is, as a, a member of the support team, can you put me through to someone who's who's uh, skilled in that area? Because at the end of the day, these guys can't know everything about seller support across everything. It's impossible, isn't it? Because it's such right. a broad, broad area. Right. Yeah. But definitely. we're jumping around a bit. Talk about captive team, et cetera. Go through all these different steps. Through the yeah, program. so, you know, this is something that you kind of, I originally heard like on the, the Facebook, you know, groups. And then, you know, I spoke to somebody once on the Costa Rica team um, and um, I mentioned to them, you know, I had this issue um, and they told me, well, if you have this issue again, you know, when you speak to a rep, ask them to be transferred to the captive team. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, okay, this is also coming like direct from Amazon. And I guess the captive team maybe is the specific team that owns that, you know, issue or department or um, higher level team that has, you know, the ability to do, to do more. Um, yeah. And so escalating, asking for that, whether it's on the phone or in, um, you know, seller support cases, you know, please escalate. Sometimes I've even asked for it on chat. Um, if I've done seller support chat and they actually say, hold on, and they'll transfer me to somebody else who will come on the chat also. Um, so these are kind of like, um, these are kind of like um, words within the Amazon ecosystem that you could say, I've said both captive and leadership team, um, and they both have worked well to get, you know, a case escalated or to get it to somebody else who may be able to better understand what you're actually trying to do. Because, um, you know, and even if it's sometimes, you know, if it's issue with listings or a catalog issue or something like that, you know, I'll have, um, like I'll make a change to a listing, I'm brand registered, maybe it doesn't go through. And, you know, the frontline support will tell me, well, I don't have the right tool in order to, like, it's like they have like a chat tool chest or something, a toolbox, and like yeah. they don't have the right wrench, you know. But I guess Amazon, if they're maybe not direct employees of the company, they don't give them access to certain things. And so they'll say, I don't have access to that tool, but let me transfer you to somebody else um, who does. And so it's good to be, you know, I think if you're aware of this stuff, then you can maybe won't be as frustrated knowing that this is kind of like standard protocol with seller support and that there is a way to get things done. Um, if you don't just accept the first answer that you get, um, you know, from, from seller support. And do you think this can get a bit better? I mean, you went to, there was an event in New York, wasn't there recently, which, you know, strangely as it might sound is Amazon actually put on their own Amazon event, didn't they? Whereas yeah. it's normally third parties. Right. So do you see do you see it improving through what you see there or? I mean, I know. I mean, uh, you know, it's interesting because the, um, that was the Boost event in New York. And I think they're going to do another one um, from what I hear. And um, the interesting part was that the the speakers were all good. There were higher level people um, at the, you know, at Amazon. You can speak to some key employees. But then they also had where you can sign up ahead of time for these like 15 minute sessions um, with Amazon representative to talk about your account or any issues you have. Um, and I found those people, even us based, 
had no clue. The, the, mm. the thing is that some of them were only, they were at Amazon like three months or six months. You know, you know, you know way more about how things work than, than they do. And even certain departments they never even heard of. Um, yeah. So I was kind of disappointed in that. And that, that's feedback that I think a lot of people gave to Amazon. I know I gave them that feedback. Um, so I haven't necessarily seen um, an improvement. I'm lucky in the sense that I, I'm in the Amazon exclusives program. So now I have a dedicated rep. Um, mm. They're not meant to be for seller support issues. So I try not to, I try to yeah. escalate and take cases and not really bother them. You know, they're for marketing and marketing placements and, and things like that. Then it's not really their, their job. So I try not to really go to them and I, I try to exhaust all options um, mm. before I had to go to them. But um, recently I did go to them with um, some lightning deals that weren't showing up in my dashboard and they were able to get them, uh, get them, uh, get them to show up there. Um, yeah. which means there's a mechanism to do this within Amazon, right? There's ways to get exceptions and ways to, uh, for example, in that case, it was, it was something they call a false positive, um, meaning something in your title, something on a listing might think it's a risky product or a dangerous product or uh, something like that, and um, it gets flagged, and it really shouldn't be. So if you have issues like that, you know, you, we, we had a whole session on, on Lightning Deals, but you can email, uh, I think it's FBA-Deals, at Amazon um, and tell them you, you might have a false positive and that might help get you um, get you on. But, but it just shows you that, uh, one, if you have a chance to go to these events and make contacts with Amazon employees and get their card and email, it's well worth it just for that purpose anytime you have a chance to you know, meet people because then potentially you could get around uh, some seller support type of uh, ty types of issues where um, you know, you've exhausted all channels. Yeah. No, totally. I mean, I, I tend to, I'm lucky enough to, not, like yourself, I speak to ex Amazon employees and normally I get a bit of sense out of those guys, you know, that they, they tend to be very helpful. So these kind of boost events and stuff, obviously there's other Amazon sellers there. Would you say that there's uh, your, that Amazon may be behind closed doors, they have a high churn rate and that's why, you know, if someone actually is very good in the support team, maybe they're progressed and, you know, been moved up the, ch up the chain or something. Yeah, there's definitely a very high churn rate at Amazon. I mean, even when I, I was, you know, when I, I was there, um, you know, somebody introduced themselves to me and said, yeah, I've been here two years or three years. And that's like a long time. That's you know? a lifetime. Yeah. 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 That's like a long time. So there's definitely high, a high churn rate there. And so, um, yeah, I imagine if you're, you know, doing great at support, then you probably have potential to do more and, you know, you probably, yeah, you probably can, can move up because it's such a big company with probably a lot of opportunities for smart people mm -hmm. to move up. So, um, yeah, you know, I think so. And, and look, you know, we, uh, we hire VAs and stuff in the Philippines, you know, and the, these are people that are making, you know, two to $4 an hour, right? They're, um, they're, they're the frontline lowest level employee. It doesn't mean anything negative about them, but they don't just have all the knowledge and all the tools available to them to, to always really help you. And so yeah. you need to, you need to push the envelope and go beyond that front line. Uh, when you really need something done, you need to escalate, make calls and kind of, you know, have persistence. I think it's, I think it's just, just like anything else in business, right? I mean, you need to, um, you, there's frustrations in a lot of aspects of business, but it's kind of uh, how you handle it and what you do with it and how you push forward to kind of get what you want done um, yeah. as opposed to just be frustrated. Yeah, no, totally. And what about, um, have you had much draw in the terms of uh, reviews, removing them like negatives or un what you feel was unjust reviews? Have you ever? Yeah, so I've tried. Um, I really only tried once really hard to get a review removed and I couldn't do it. And mm. I could actually prove, and this was, a, you know, again, a, fr a frustration because I could actually prove that it was a competitor. Um, mm. You know, so I got a one star review on my product. Um, they had their name, you know, on the review. So I was able to, this was a time when like there was no review matching or any kind of software out there, um, mm. which might be going away anyway. But um, I was able to, you know, check the order directly, Google the address and the seller name and address came up. And then I saw that that seller is a competitor of mine selling similar products. So I had everything there, screenshots, arrows, everything there. Um, I even, I even hired someone to write a letter, um, you know, a really good letter as part of it and they wouldn't remove it. I, I find it's so the, after that, I kind of gave up on trying to, you know, yeah. 
get get reviews re removed. It's not like getting seller feedback removed. You know, it's a Amazon just has so much that they they, they want to keep the integrity of their review system so much that they really don't want to remove a, a review unless somebody's using hate language or uh, yeah, swear. You know, some, something like that. Um, in fact, you can even put links to competitor products on reviews. I mean, that's all within terms of service um, on what you're allowed to do with re in reviews. So, um, no, I, I try to, you know, um, if I get a negative review like that, I'll try to message a customer if I can and send them a replacement or something. But um, I generally won't go to Amazon because it's just, I feel Pointless. like it's, it's an uphill battle. Yeah. I, what, what's been your experience? Well, I'd done before because the, they've had two terms of service updates in the way that they've written uh, the terms of service. Um, there were three or four reviews and we're going back possibly as far as 18 months in a period. And it was when the terms of service says you uh, basically the review said, uh, I don't think this worked, question mark. And basically, back then, it, it said that you have to explain what it is so the community understands. It has to be more than 15 words. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it was like, it, it, it basically, when you looked at their terms, I cut and pasted underneath and I put, this is, you know, basically uh, 15 words. It's less than 15 words. The customer doesn't even know whether it works. They're not feeding the, the community or anything. They're saying to someone, doesn't it, it, does this even work question mark or they don't realize it worked and it's like who's going to understand that so there was no value to the uh to the, and so i went through each part of the terms and conditions which it said that we'd remove it on this basis which they won't but it's just guidelines isn't it right You've got absolutely nowhere with it back forth back forth and i've done that across a few reviews to reiterate that point and, then I, and my point was well why do you actually have guidelines right. if you're not going to ever enforce them? Because I thought, well, they didn't do it with this one. Let's try it with the second, and then I'll try it with the third. And it's the same thing over and over again. And then what I did do, a member has said, do you realize you've sent me this email, and it's exactly as, as such and such. So I've done a screen grab of their email, and I said, the only difference is the signature. You haven't even reviewed this and looked into it. This is a blatant, you know, not the word blatant, but this is a right. complete cut and paste. So you're not even looking at this and taking it into consideration, not actually writing back to me. And, and I showed them side by side, basically, the screen grabs of the, this is just cut and paste junk. So it's pointless me going after. So I, I gave up after that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, you remind me, uh, when I went to Prosper Show last year, there was a speaker and he said, you know, he spoke about reviews. And one of the things he said, I think, was something like that. Like, if it's 70 characters or less, you can ask for it to be removed. And I was like, oh, awesome. You know, as soon as I got home, I went into, I had a review like that. You know, it was like somebody just put like garbage or something, you know, like a one yeah. star or something. And asked for it to be removed. And, and Amazon responded like, no, we, we took that out of the terms or, or something like that. And yeah. um, so it's possible at one point, maybe they did. But um, yeah, it just seems extremely difficult. It's not a... You know, it's not something I really try. The only, you know, the only time I think I would try is if I got, you know, a bunch of negative reviews in one shot and I really thought this was like a competitor attack, then that's something I would try to fight hard to prove yep. and, and to get removed. But, uh, you know. Flip side, there are competitors out there are now doing five-star reviews, lots of them, on their competitors, and they're saying that they, they got it as a free gift or a, a di deep discount. Right. So that it triggers the algorithm if they if they have one running at that end you know to say look these are all incentivized reviews and then they would report you yeah it's like what can you do there you know I, i'll tell you one one uh story like that so I, I heard um so the seller got a bunch of one star reviews on their listing and the one star reviews said something like well you should buy this other product right on amazon and they went to that other seller and they said, hey, what, what the heck is going on? Well, it turns out uh, it wasn't the other seller that was doing that. It was a third party that was giving the one-star reviews and saying, go buy this other guy's product so that the guy getting the one-star review would blame another seller and not the third party who was actually doing it. That's how you know, yeah. crazy it, it can get. Thankfully, I haven't had to, uh, you know, to, to deal with that. But um, those are the type of things that I would fight like hell for it to, 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 to try to get taken care of if, if it happened to me. Um, yeah. but it is very, very difficult to get Amazon to, 
to remove uh, reviews. I, I also think they're gonna be making changes to the seller feedback system. Uh, I spoke to somebody at Amazon who told me next year they plan to kind of overhaul that. And my feedback was that it's very frustrating for sellers who are getting constant product reviews on their seller feedback, you know? Um, and we kind of wish that Amazon sent out an email for review and not, not the seller feedback because when it's FBA, I mean, uh, shipping issues are not in my control. I, I either get, you know, good reviews, good seller feedback that's a product review or like a one star or something that's like didn't arrive on time or a negative review, right? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, my suggestion was that Merchant Fulfilled and FBA should not be the same seller feedback system, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, and that it should be, it'd be great if instead of Amazon sending out seller feedback for FBA sellers, it would be, you know, product review because there's how much value in that seller feedback. Most of it is product reviews. Um, yeah. So I think there'll be, there'll be a change there um, next year. Hopefully I'll make it better in terms of uh, well, review. I hope they do some of that user interface. It looks like dial up, you know, right. AOL dial up from 1998, does it? It's right. Like there's crickets in the back, back end and they must have little bits of code that are pasted just to hold things together. It's just diabolical, isn't it? But right. Let's finish this on a positive note, shall we? So, Captive Team, we've got, uh, we haven't spoke about the Jeff bomb either. I mean, you, obviously there's Jeff at Amazon.com for different reasons. Right. You've got the Captive Team. I think the, um, the catalog team are great. I mean, yeah. they seem to be really knowledgeable, especially on flat files and things like that. Definitely. They have been super helpful. And I think if you discuss with in and around, like you talked about, the territories that you're in, not just the US, where else did you say? Not Colombia, where was the other place? Costa Rica. Uh, Costa Rica, yeah. Yeah, yep. so we've got Ireland as well, which they're normally very sharp there. Mm -hmm. And I suppose it comes down to a time of day as well, wouldn't it? So if mm -hmm. you're, you need to make sure, like I'm based in the UK, if I want to catch what's going on in the US, I need to work on US, US hours to right. ensure that when I make that call, it's probably within the US, it's going to get picked up rather than like a satellite company that's out of that timeline. Right. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, sometimes it's a matter of luck. You know, if you call during the day, you might get overseas or you might get the U.S., but you definitely have a better chance. I found like even like on a Saturday during the yeah. day, I'll get like a U.S. person. Um, so maybe they're not working uh, as much or they don't have as many employees on, on a weekend overseas. And they do have during daytime hours in the U.S. on Saturday, I'll get a U.S. Um, I'll get a U.S. Uh, employee. But sometimes it's just kind of like luck in terms of uh, probably how many calls they're getting and where they get routed. Uh, yeah. But I, th I think you can escalate, you know, and, and generally I find you can, you can get things done, but it could be frust frustrating, you know, kind of like your experience. It took 25 emails where it should have been, you know, it should have been uh, one, but you know, I guess on, on a positive note, um, don't let seller central support hold back your business, right? Like yeah. put, push forward and push back against it. You know, if you think about somebody like Jeff Bezos, right, he pushes the envelope with everything that he does. So, mm -hmm. you know, think about your business like what Jeff Bezos we do. He would not accept uh, the yeah. first thing that he got from a seller support rep. Yeah, most definitely. Okay, cool. Let's end that there. It's been great to uh, debate this with you today. As you could hear, it's been very frustrating for me and my voice. That's why I try and steer clear of it. I hope uh, the guys out there will take away some useful information to help them get over their frustrations as well. Uh, I look forward to getting you back for another debate in the future. Um, what's the best way people can reach you? Um, sure. So you can find me on, on Facebook, uh, Leron Hirschkorn. You can send me a message. Um, we also have a Facebook group, uh, Amazing Freedom, uh, Amazon Sellers, free group. So you can join there, um, but always reach out to me, Facebook or, or through that group. Superb. All right, guys, we'll see you again next week. Take care, Leron. Take care.